Hi everyone. Hello, good evening. Awesome drama, says Louise Birchall. Anita O'Reilly, evening everyone. Um, evening. Gabrielle, Jason Watkins was fantastic. It was very, it was a very... Oh, Jason Watkins. It was a very tight, tight three-parter, wasn't it? Let's face it. It was a very I've tightly... I've got my disappointments, though. I've got my disappointments, too. I'll save that. Um, it was a very tight... Uh, I've really enjoyed it. It's been really nice having three nights. Yeah. Of a, I love it when they do things. When you, can't, when you can't binge watch it, but you could watch it consecutively. Yeah, exactly. And also, I think it's kind of old-fashioned, but it's that sort of ability to watch things at a set time of an evening. Mm. I mean, who are we that we can't set our clocks to do something at the same time of an evening? What are we? What have we become that we can't schedule ourselves at all? Well, because we hate routine of any I can't sort. Stand it. I hope it never happens that's again. I hope got, it never happens that's again. That's why we've got... <laughs> Not going to say. Uh, Marcia Toms, I have to say I agree. I preferred the third episode to the second episode, but I have to confess, I was thoroughly disappointed by how little David Tennant we had in the last yeah. two episodes. I thought they yeah. put him in the front a lot. He was top heavy. I tell you what my big disappointment was. If you, remember, if you yeah. were with us on the review in the first episode, I was so excited because what I thought we were going to see is the unravelling of his life mm. to see what had led, got him to where he got. Mm. And actually... Um, I just didn't get enough of that. I didn't know anything more about Dennis Nielsen no. at the end of it no. than I did in the first episode. And yet there is... I'm, I think I might get the book. I don't know if I can bear it, actually. But and yet there's this book with all the details of well, his that, life. That the weirdest part... Weird. Okay, let me explain the weirdest part of it all to me, structurally. Because I thought Jason, uh, Jason Watkins was brilliant. Is it Jason Watkins? I forgot his name right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. So you've got this, you've got this device where you're using, you're basing it on yeah. the book. You've got the device of having a brilliant actor playing the author. Yeah. You've got him in interview situations with David Tennant, but we finding never, out all the information, all, all the juicy stuff, and yet we, we were caught it. up with police procedure. But no, but we weren't told any of it. Anything. I know nothing more about him on episode three than I knew in episode one. I thought what was going to happen at the end was that he was going to suggest that he himself, because surely he was in possession of far more intimate knowledge. Of de yeah. but we are, but the thing we have to remember, we are dealing with a time when the psychoanalytical background of a person wasn't as important. No, but he wanted to find out what made him tick to give a warning. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. He wasn't. He said all along it wasn't a salacious book. It wasn't going to be a mm. gruesome book. He wanted to find out about the man and what had led him to this. Mm. And. You know, I, I feel like we were sold a bit of a pup, to be honest. Yeah, I do too. I that do. was the promise in episode yeah. one, and we were all really excited, and then we didn't get it. Would well, you know what I think I had happened? moments of being a little bit bored. Well, do you know what I think happened? I think they got, they got the rights to the book, because they said it was based on the book, didn't they? But we didn't hear anything from the book. So was it based think? on the book? It's based on transcripts. Have any of you read the book? I'd love to know. Has anyone read the book? Helen H has just asked, what, Mark, what do they call it in film production when you hear the next shot before you see it? It's called an overlapping edit. There you go. Um, it's often used in horror films. I thought... I yes, thought, Susie Bulmer. I agree, Nigel. I want to know what made him that way. Yeah. He mentions his granddad leaving really effective. That was the strongest scene in the entire yeah. three-parter about him in terms of being surrounded by death, surrounded by... And his grandfather was the only person he loved, so obviously he'd been around a lot of abuse as a mm. child. That's what I understood it to mean. Mm. Don't forget, he said, oh, it'd be great to get this off my chest and give mm. it to you, yeah. the horrors of but my life. Really and then we didn't get any of it. I mean... You know, what's his name? Maze was great. You know, it was interesting. But how many crime dramas have you seen with doctors, uh, police wandering around feeling so depressed about saying, the fact that they, the process was holding them up? Are you saying it became the thing we were delighted the first episode wasn't? Wasn't, exactly. Yeah, a procedural. Uh, I just cannot. I, I want to watch all three episodes and do a cigarette cam mm -hmm. on how many shots started with it burning, in, close up in shot. Every interior. I got asthma watching it. Did you get asthma watching it? I felt wheezy. I felt wheezy. <laughs> I, I tell you a, a couple of parallels that I really did like and you, you spotted and you were talking about saying, oh, the moment uh, David Tennant, Nilsson took the author's tie. Oh. That was a great moment. I mean, yes. I mean, so far as the parallels, yeah, he's to been be trapped. Fair, he's we wanted were to given, get close to him. We were given really wonderfully subtle yeah. um, clues. Um, and and I, you know, when he wanted that tie, it was so suggestive the way he asked for the time. I thought we could have stayed with that scene those Why scenes a bit longer. Why didn't we have more of that? We could have really had sizzling into... You know how long they held that chat between them in the first episode? I felt we just 
they needed the courage of their convictions to just stay with the two talking I know, heads. I know. Even at the end, when he said... Do you think they didn't have much time with David Tennant? Well, David Tennant looked like he had all the time in the world. He was sat back on every reclining chair, giving them absolutely well, I know, everything. I mean, no, I know as that. As the I actual know. actor did. Of didn't... course. But, I mean, even that moment as he walked down the corridor, he said, I wasn't mad. I know I wasn't mad at anything about it. If it wasn't 15, it'd have been 115 in the end. I couldn't have stopped. That couldn't have stopped. I wasn't I mad. I couldn't have stopped. I mean, his pragmatism in his his murderiness. Oh, Tennant was a producer in this as well. What I was struck by... I thought by, he was impeccable when he was on, but I wanted more of him. What I was struck by were many things within our legal system, which is batshit crazy. And I said to Mark, so at the end of the day, 12 people on the jury are going to decide whether oh, he's sane or insane. Oh, this is a really good insane. point that you made. Yeah. Well, actually, it should have been 12 psychiatrists. Because if you think about it, you know a lot of people have made come to conclusions on Trump's yeah. mental health, for, for instance, and there's always absolute outcry that nobody should have any assumptions made about their mental health mm. unless they are in a, you yeah. know, a clinical situation yeah. where they have the proper test. And yet, 12 jurors can decide whether he's sane or not. Answer Bonk me bonkers. this. Answer me this. You can have Insane. all that paid for, trained, legal expertise in a courtroom with all of the nuanced complexities, Latin at their fingertips, the ability to invoke There's laws and legi legislatures from over 7,000 years' worth of legislature making. And then what they do in this curious little quirk called juries is they take it away from all the experts and hand it over to 12 inexpert people. Okay. And go, Make what do you think? Mind. I mean, it's like saying, it's like Britain's Got Talent. Why don't you vote on it? So scary, isn't it's it? It's so scary. I've never, I personally have never really understood how a jury makes it a good thing. You see, I think it's very scary because say somebody does have a terrible mental illness. Yeah. Though I would say being put into a mental institution, and Mark's mum's worked in a prison mental institution, it's not like a soft option. No. It's tough, really tough. No. And you have no end date and all of that. Yeah. But, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Don't worry. I, I just wanted to say something. The actor who we love from The Crown, who played the defence uh, lawyer, defence barrister, who was pushing for manslaughter, there was a really interesting moment. Did anyone else notice it? When they cut to the nod that he gave mm. the winning lawyer who managed to get the mur murder vict uh, verdict, I personally think that would have been asked the, the actual lawyer who, who that... Was mm, actor was I blank. Said that no, 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 I do. I don't I agree because they're detail. supposed to be impartial. Well, they are. The very nature of it. He he would probably have seen that a vulnerability if he showed that. It, well, no, no, no. I'm talking about in real life. I think yeah. the real life lawyer is probably now very old and will have not wanted. He will have said, "Would you mind putting a nod in so that I can I appear to acknowledge that it was a, a good mm. verdict?" Because you don't want to be known as the guy who defended De Dennis Nilsson, do you? But 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 the defense defense lawyers that's that's they do it because they have such a but passionate that's my belief. Point. But that's my in... point. It was such a noticeable cut. It's so so not needed. I, I it's just a theory. Yeah. I'd be fascinated to know from the production notes whether that's the case. Karen R says David Tennant was phenomenal. I've seen him do Henry the Fourth. I saw him do Richard the Second. He was absolutely sensational. He overshadowed all the other, other actors who was the same in this. That's her saying he's brilliant. But Molly 26 Rose says, found it really underwhelming. Mm. Thought David Tennant was amazing, but didn't feel invested or gripped at all. Was waiting for something yeah. gobsmacking to happen. I think you're I right. Agree, Molly. And it never came. I didn't come out of it knowing anything I didn't already know. But just on the system again, that's what I've remembered what I was going to say. You know, if he was insane... Yeah. And it's left up to 12 jurors. What juror is really going to say the person is insane when they've heard in right. detail all the terrible things that they've done? They're going to feel rage and they're going to say, no, he was just pure evil. But there's a palpable contradiction in the whole, was he mad to murder yeah. or not well, mad to enough mad. to murder? Is it no, insane no. to do that? Well, no, 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 precisely. What they were arguing over was by giving him the murder uh, verdict, they were saying he was sane. But the problem I have is you aren't sane Say, if exactly. you murder. So you're caught in a double self-fueling bind. But the problem with it was, was that if he got manslaughter, he'd get 15 years. So you've got to say, you were insane yeah. and you have killed 15 people. We deem that you will never be sane enough to leave hospital again. But the, the worry was that he would be eventually deemed cured and mm. let out. But I don't think that ever would have happened, would it? No. Would it? No. I mean... But it's an interesting one, isn't it? That the idea yeah. of madness... Yeah. The definition of madness is to have done something 
batshit bat crazy. crazy. <laughs> or the definition of not being mad is to... But, but I was saying to Mark, it's interesting how far we've moved on with, our me- with understanding of mental health because... It, and what was he like? And he said, hey, he was very still and very mm. able to speak. Not crazy at all, then. No. It's like a crazy person only runs around looking like a crazy person. Nanny dies in the room. Hello, Hi, Nanny, Nanny Dye. Dye. You, well, look, everyone you needs to know. Daniel Nanny Mays. Dye obsessed. is obsessed with Daniel Mays. She has been since he was a, a baby, actually. And um, she, you're right, Mum, he was great. We, and I'm fond of him because you're fond of him, actually. Mum, what was the film he was in with Riz Ahmed? It was such a good little yeah, indie film, wasn't it? Such a good actor. I can't remember what it was, but it was a really, really good film. But the, it we, wasn't his fault when no. it was wrong today. It just, we, we've got this astonishing character that we wanted to unravel. Yes. We had another brilliant actor yeah. and character that was going to be able to... We had the perfect conceit to do it all, mm. and then they didn't do it. Yeah. Totally uh, agree. Uh, Police shuffling around trying to get somebody to listen to them. Not interesting. Another shout out to one other actor in the film, uh, the programme, was Carl, the victim who was killed and brought back to life. Oh, he was so he good. was. He had two he very, three very hard scenes to come yeah, in and he really hit. Did. He hit them beautifully and brilliantly and incredibly, you know, that could have gone over the top. It could have been, he just yeah. pitched it perfectly. And, uh, I thought he was brilliant too. That's the kind of role or moment by an actor. Keep your eyes peeled for him because there'll be moments coming in the years to come where we go, oh, he's the guy who played the guy in, in, in the thing that he was in the thing thing. Um, Guys, thank you. We've got to go. We're going to go and record a podcast. something else now. We have to do two podcasts tonight. Yeah. We've already done one. We need to do another one. Um, so... Please hit the thumbs up. Shifty, if you've enjoyed. that's it. If you like us doing TV reviews. Yeah then um, hit, hit the, the thumbs, thumbs up. up. Nanny Dice, um, just quickly, Nanny Dice, just remember, if you want a really, really good English, Nanny still hasn't seen it and she will love it, indie English movie, check out Shifty, starring Riz Ahmed oh, yeah, and really uh, Daniel Mays. It's really they good. are brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant, yeah. All hit right, the guys. Thumbs up, get hit us up to 100. Up. And guys, um, check, go over to my Instagram feed. I've uploaded another lip sync of Kim Kardashian. Hey. I'm in my pants. It's a corker. And I look like poo It's a cracker. <laughs> it's, the way she, it's the way she wears them. It's the way she wears them. <laughs>